In this video trailer, it's going to explore the question, should you ever buy or sell outside of a Bollinger Band? Stay tuned. Hey traders, a warm welcome to you. All right, so Bollinger Bands generally are there to contain price, right? So standard deviation around a moving average effectively. So the middle of the Bollinger Band is your moving average, you set that at say 20, that's the standard settings normally. Then you set the standard deviations outside of that moving average. And usually the settings are 20 and two. Now some people use two and a half, three you can use, but generally it's quite wide and you don't often get many tags. Obviously the further out you go, the less likely you're gonna get a tag of it. Now most people will use a Bollinger Band as a kind of mean reverse tool. In other words, price, let's say these are our Bollinger Bands here, as price comes out of the Bollinger Band, there goes, there's the short entry, and as price goes in the, out of the lower Bollinger Band, there's the long entry. And this is kind of contains price, generally speaking, as it flows up and down. And a perfect scenario is that market is range bound or very slightly trending and the Bollinger is kind of used as an extension point. We go, oh, it's a little bit stretched. I'm going to take profits or I'm going to fade the move. So that's the general traditional way. So the question is, can you ever buy or sell outside of the Bollinger Band? Because the theory is that if you're outside of a Bollinger Band to the high side, it's too stretched. You're uh, it's two standard deviations away. Is it likely to continue? It's feels like it's a little bit of a chasing trade. Well, the answer is, guys, yes, under certain conditions, it's a great trade because a lot of the time, when it breaks out of a Bollinger Band, if you're in the right conditions, we'll go through this in a second, this thing will just rip and rip and rip. And then sometimes it's the start of an explosive volatility expansion move. Now, under the wrong conditions, of course, it's gonna come back in. Markets will mean revert more often than they will break out. That's just the normal thing. You look at a chart, you don't have to believe me on that, you just look at your normal chart, guys, the market you trade, look at your daily chart, see how many wicks and tails have are faked out before coming back. You know, explosive multi-day moves are rare, but the risk reward ratio of those is good, so they're worth fishing for, if you don't mind taking a few losers along the way because they're really, really decent risk reward ratio. Okay, so what scenarios are we looking for? So scenarios would be if you've broken out, preferably with some kind of catalyst, no, we talk a lot about a catalyst, how price responds to a catalyst, how the supply demand balance shifts. We talk about our filters and more triggers and etc. If you haven't checked it out, then go and check it out. If you're not on it already, if you're on it already, you know what I'm talking about. But the point is, if you're under the right conditions, you've got volatility expansion, breaking out of a Bollinger is basically saying, hey, listen, listen, something's going on. So what would you need? You'd need, the Bollingers generally will contract under lower range bound conditions. So the range is low, Bollingers will contract. As range starts to expand, they will widen out as well. So as you see, generally breakouts, they will widen. So it's easier under narrow range conditions to break out of a Bollinger band. So you've got to be aware of that. However, if it breaks out of a Bollinger Band with, let's say, a catalyst, if you're trading the index, maybe the Fed's done something, if you're trading a currency, it's obviously the Fed as well, anything that's giving it a reason to do it, and you see increased volume on the breakout, so you've got this kind of thing, good volume, then you might consider following that move, feels like you're chasing it a bit, but you might consider following that because it is a volatility expansion. We're breaking out of a range and just because you've broken out of that top bolly means that ultimately things may well continue, 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 continue. And you know, very often guys, as you can go and look at like multiple charts and you'll see price hug that upper Bollinger for a long period of time before it pulls back. So the right conditions would be broken out of a range, extra bonus for a catalyst, good volume, closing at extreme highs, in other words, in top 10% of the trend in day, and then opening again near those highs the next day. If you've got those criteria, then perhaps considering following the move might be a good option for you because you might get four or five days of move. It's like a pent up burst, the damn burst, bang, it just goes and the Bollinger will follow it. And then an extra little thing, guys, the first close below 
is often a buying opportunity as well. So if you haven't got on that first push up and you've been watching it, comes back because the first close below the Bollinger, very often that's the slightest little retracement ready for the next day for it to catapult up to the upside. And even if you're feeling extra cheeky and you want to try to get a little bit clever with it, you're waiting for it to break through the prior day's low, then come back up and then there's your long and you can quantify your risk a lot, lot better. But we talked about all this stuff before. Uh, this is something to watch out for. It's useful. It's another way of looking at Bollinger Bands. It's a, like, okay, extreme moves, hug, hug, hug that upper body or hug, hug, hug the lower body. Only if you've broken out of a range though, only if you've got the good volume and preferably if you've got an extra catalyst to give it a shove as well. All right, guys, take care. If you like this kind of stuff, thumbs up, much appreciated. Bye-bye.